If you're looking for a piece of property in the U.S. close to the Canadian border where you can chase critters kind of like this, well, have we got it here. We're near Greenbush, Minnesota on a 1,400-acre piece of recreational property. Uh, what do you say let's go down to Greenbush and talk to some of the town folk and see what the town's all about? We've got Polaris, we've got Articat, we've got DigiKey within the surrounding area. And one of our bigger employers, and real proud to say, we've got Central Boiler and Matt Tracks close by. So, uh, you know, we're pretty proud of those companies. And, uh, you know, as far as our tooting our own horn, a community our size a lot of times don't offer everything that Greenbush can offer, which uh, kind of starts with a trap club. We got a race park, a golf course, swimming pool, library, uh, a real swell school to brag about. So, I mean, in a town our size, we've got quite a bit going on. and. Uh, could always be more if we get visitors to come and see us and we look forward to that. Greenbush has a population of nearly 800 people. The city offers a wide variety of recreational opportunities, business, industry and housing. It's a laid-back country community with great schools, parks and lots of hunting. Right here in Minnesota they got cowboys too. Now we're here with Keith. Now Keith, what, what do you do out here at, uh, in uh, the Greenbush area? Now I see you got your daughter riding. What do y'all do? Well, we train horses and we rodeo and uh, I just raise some bulls and coriennes to rope. Uh, train a lot of rope horses, barrel horses, really? uh, just trail horses for the general pub public. Uh, horses that go out west hunting. Um, I've been riding for a while. I've been riding since I was really little. And my brother rides. I just train him in here in uh, this quarter horse. and. I ride horse every day after school when I get home. Oh, that's got to be a bad job. No. <laughs> you like riding horses? Yeah. And we have, as you probably know, um, a nice big hunting area out northwest of Greenbush, Juneberry. Mm -hmm. Popular for bears and deer and uh, a lot of wildlife. Good. Anyway, uh, I represent this area along with the whole county and and I've uh, been there now for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the people because they're, they're good people around here. Uh, the concept of the Central Wheeler Outdoor Wood Furnace is very simple. It takes the element of heating with wood and it moves it outside the home. No chimney fires, no dirt, no dust, bugs brought into the home, no ashes to haul out of the home. All of the, all of the fire is burnt outside in the outdoor furnace. This illustration here shows us how, basically how it works. You put fire in the in the fire or put wood in the firebox of the furnace. It heats the water. The water is circulated into the home. The outdoor furnace can sit anywhere from five feet to 500 feet away from the home that it's heating. Circulates into the home. Most people, when they heat their home, they also heat their domestic hot water. The water never mixes with the actual water. It's in a tube and shell heat exchanger. That water then goes to another heat exchanger that's in the plenum of the of the existing furnace in the home already so that the homeowner can set his thermostat at whatever temperature he wants. One thing we hear time and time again is, I used to have to have my thermostat set at 67 or 68 degrees. Now my wife has it set at 72 degrees. They love it. They set the thermostat, it heats the entire home. It's not like an indoor unit where it heats a single room. Um, that's basically the concept of what an outdoor wood furnace is. The flame, smoke, and unburned gases continue to be pushed downward into the lower reaction chamber where the correct amount of additional heated air is introduced. Here we have opened the reaction chamber door while the furnace is in operation. Notice the intense downward burning flame. This is where the final combustion of the unburned gases is occurring. During this stage, the reaction chamber temperature can reach 2,000 degrees. This extreme heat results in combustion efficiencies that approach 100%. Heat from the exhaust then moves from the reaction chamber through the extract heat transfer system and is transferred to the water supply before the exhaust exits the chimney. Now Rick, how many different designs you guys got here? Well, basically the uh, Maxim furnace, we have uh, uh, one design, it's a Maxim 250 it's mm -hmm. called. We have the classic model, we have a classic 4030, a 5036, a 6048, and a 7260. And they do exactly as the numbers indicate. They get bigger and bigger and bigger as they go. Basically, whatever the heating need is that you have, we have a furnace made to, uh, to take care of it for you. We even have an actual bigger one called a pallet burner, um, really? more of an industrial unit. So, Well, you know, the way that the, uh, 
the energy prices are. It makes sense, folks, to go to a boiler like this. Man, the, the, Absolutely. the technology, everybody's got wood laying around, and you can burn just about any kind of wood in this thing. As long as you're burning wood, yeah, and it's not been painted or treated or anything like that, yeah, you're absolutely right. And yes, you're right, the energy prices, they continue to grow. I think some of us have gotten used to the fact that we're paying so much for it, but the bottom line is, with an outdoor wood furnace, whether you buy your wood or you have access to your own wood, mm -hmm. it's still a much, much cheaper way to go. We have thousands of testimonials and people tell us that we paid for our furnace in one year, we paid for our furnace in two or three years. Um, depending on the model that you buy and what you use it for, um, you can pay for it really quickly and then you can take the next 20 years after that and put that money you'd be spending on heating oil, put it in a bank and go do something fun with it. Folks, just another reason to move right here to the Greenbrush area is a corporation like you've got it here. How many employees roughly you have? Right in the plant here we have about 200, but we have about 400 dealers too, and, so, and we also have other welders, so we support a lot of families. But right here in Greenbush, yeah, we have uh, about 200 employees right here at the factory. Go to the website, give them a call, and order your boiler today, folks. You know, when you're in green brush, the one thing you can be sure of, you'll have some good restaurants here. Now, of course, I'm with Sandy, or is it Sun? They're twins, you're right. okay? You are Sandy, right. right? Right. Now, Sandy, where's your restaurant? Badger. All right, Badger, of course, is uh, north of it. Tell, tell us about Badger. How big is Badger? And what, to, what do you offer on your menu? Oh, Badger is about 500 people. Really? And we offer burgers, fries, different types of sandwiches. And then we have specials at, at dinner time. Mm -hmm. We have the hot pork or hot beef right. sandwiches and chicken dinners. And, and now, the, now here we are in Greenbrush, folks. And, and uh, now this is the other one. Sonia. 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 Okay. <laughs> now then. Now, Sonia, your restaurant is a... Uh, it's, it goes back and now the front, I like the front of it, kind of the old, the old 50s look here. Yes. What do you offer here at the, the, at the restaurant? Same as what we <laughs> offer in Badger. Imagine, same hey, menu. imagine same that folks, thing. being twins <laughs> offering about the same, same. thing. I bet. <laughs> now let's talk about the, the land here. Now, you know, the perfect use for this property right now is total recreation. Come yeah. out here and have fun, enjoy, and hunting out here. Yes, very good hunting. You know, yep. a lot of, a lot of, now tell me what, what all kind of critters are available up here? Well, we got a lot of whitetail up here and uh, bear hunting. Uh, there's uh, a lot of people come up here uh, during the winter time for brush wolves and bobcats really? and the like. And there's a lot of uh, uh, waterfall hunting, mm -hmm. goose. Uh, all right, uh, the name of my outfit is Blooming Valley Outfitters. We're located in northwestern uh, Rosa County here in northern Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Uh, we mainly do uh, bear and, and bobcat hunts. Our bear season is just a fall season, which runs September 1st to the middle of October, typically. And once that's over, we kind of switch gears and we gear up and we do a few deer hunts and then we switch over and, and get going with our hounds and we run bobcat. We got about a six week season for that. Now when you're uh, touring a property, like up here in Minnesota, you need some great equipment. And one of them, of course, is the Hey, the Arctic Cat. Uh, of course, we're partial to these, and it's the finest uh, all-terrain vehicle. This is a Prowler 650H1, and uh, of course, we got the other Prowler at the, at the house, the 700 that we drive down in Colorado. But up here in Minnesota, the, the folks at Matt Tracks has, has, of course, they drive. They put them on about every kind of vehicle you've got here, and um, like I said, the best machine. As far as I'm concerned on ATV, UTV is the Arctic Cat. But if you want the best set of tracks here, I got a guy here, J uh, Jeremy, come over here and let's talk about Matt Tracks. Now, of course, it's Jeremy, hey, Hi there. thanks a lot for bringing this stuff out here. Yep. Now let's talk about Matt Tracks. These are the Cadillac when it comes to the tracks. And we, me and you was talking a while ago. Yep. If you want a set of tracks and you're not going to use them, there's cheaper ones out there. Definitely. <laughs> yep. And tell we, me uh, about the Matt Tracks. Well, we strive on uh, on quality and performance as well. Uh, we have the the best set of tracks bar none. We have uh, internal suspension, mm -hmm. all-terrain tracks, as well as we do make them for uh, uh, custom applications for different areas. Uh, the soft snow, we have a different set of tracks for them. We can outfit virtually any four-wheel drive vehicle with tracks. You know what I like about it, folks, if you can't afford a, a, a snowmobile and you want both, 
Boy, this is the okay. way to go yep. with putting it's a set of these things it, on here. It's a 30 minute conversion and you can have it uh, on tracks. Oh yeah, and you take the wheels off and rock and roll and, and uh, it's just one of the, you know, let's go, let's go through some of the, you know, not only have we got them on, you know, the ATVs, we're fixing to ride around in a Ford truck, folks, here in a little bit. Which, uh, we'll show you that in just a second. But now, just kind of go over a, a couple of the other, now, the, I, I think the forestry department's got them. Tell me some of the other big vehicles that you can put them on. Yep, we uh, uh, we run it on Ford F5, up to five, uh, Ford F550 trucks, uh, up to uh, 20,000 GVW. Really? We run them on uh, four-wheel drive tractors up to 150 horsepower. Wow. Um, we've uh, cranberry harvesters, uh, blueberry harvesters, olive harvesters. Um, the applications are endless. Um, as long as you have a four-wheel drive vehicle, you can put tracks on it. And you all manufacture them right here in Minnesota? Yep, Carlston, Minnesota. Golly, let's, hey, let's go over and look at this uh, this Ford yeah. truck. Jeremy, the, the, tell us about this here. You got it now. These are these are quite a bit bigger than those. Oh yes, these are the our uh, 150 M1A2 model. It consists of a cast aluminum frame for uh, uh, less corrosion mm -hmm. and uh, lighter lighter uh, construction. Um, we have an all-terrain tread on this. It's, it's our XT tread. And it's, uh, it's the same, about a 30 minute conversion to convert this truck from tires to tracks. Well, I'll tell you what, let's hop in here and let's give this thing a test drive. Okay. Let's These are old windbreaks that have been planted uh, years ago. Uh, it was a, a lot of hype about uh, wind erosion. I don't think there was a big problem with it up here, but there was programs available for planting trees and and uh, to keep the wind erosion down. These are old windbreaks. The rest of the, the land is uh, pretty much open. We'll uh, drive down here and be able to see uh, all the rest of it is uh, CRP and a uh, bit of brushy land mm -hmm. and, and so forth. A lot of wildlife uh, habitat Hey, we're here with another hunter. Uh, you, you're you're a pretty good hunter in the area, and and uh, let's talk about you know the the area here and, and the hunting. Now, y'all are known for pretty large whitetail. What's the body weight on some of these whitetail here? Well, our biggest one at deer camp four days after it was shot was 284 pounds. Now, that's <laughs> by far the biggest one we've had. My. But generally, they'll run. If you get a good sized buck, it's 240. Really. <laughs> Man, these are these are all northern deer, folks, and they, uh, you know, you're so close to Canada, and Canada is known for the, you know, the big deer, and we're right here at Canada. How far are we from Canada? Do you say roughly? Here, be around five miles. Oh man, just right across the border. Yep. Now the the uh, the hunting seasons, y'all y'all hunt. Uh, the season starts when? When does the season start up here? Well, for us, it's a, the beginning of November, about uh -huh. the first week in November is when the rifle season starts. We'll start archery hunting in mid September, and that runs right to December 31st. Really? We have approximately uh, 1,400 acres here total, and the CRP is uh, just over 1,000 acres, probably about 1,100. Mm -hmm. And uh, that CRP is in yet till 018. And uh, it has an annual payment of just a little, right around $50,000 a year. Wow. And, uh, it requires just a minimum amount of maintenance each year for weed control. You know the the for a person that wanted to, now it's now the the um, the C, C, uh, CRP is uh, over in in uh, 2018. But now is there a chance to renew that? Well, there's been a renewal available for all the CRP as it comes to the end of its term, depending upon the soil types of soils. Right. And there are some criteria to meet, but. Normally, it's going to be available to go back in. And you know, another thing I like about Minnesota and the way you guys got it up here, there's there's other gov government programs that pay you money that that this property might be uh, eligible for. That's true. There's enhancements to the land that are paid by the government to improve it and maintain it, and uh, this comes along as uh, during the period of time that is in CRP. You know, folks, that's what makes a property like this a value more valuable is is uh, you know, use it for hunting, but get paid for you know the, all other different kinds of programs, and have money coming in from hunting, the CRP, the other programs that might be available. That's absolutely right. It's uh, it's a good deal all around for the owner. 
you know, folks, we're sitting here talking and, and me and Rod looking down. We got wolf tracks right, right up and down this road right here. That's right. Fresh. Pretty good sized ones too. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, thanks so much for showing me the property. And if you've got any questions about a property in Minnesota, give us a call.